guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, that bloody dog is doing my head in. Hi guys, welcome back to my... Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you my New Year's resolutions and goals. So number one, let's just get the cliche over and done with because I think this is going to be the majority of people's New Year's resolution and that is to lose weight or get healthy, get fitter, whatever you want to name it. So basically, this is like a little backstory. Um, before I was pregnant with Ted, when I was I think like six weeks into the pregnancy, so that's what I class as my pre-baby weight, I weighed eight stone and ten pounds and when I was at the heaviest with Ted, so when I was like nine months pregnant, right at the end of my pregnancy, I weighed 10 stone 10, so I'd put on exactly two stone. Um, I lost all the weight really quick, probably in a, probably like two weeks within having him, I lost all my weight. And then, I don't know, I think my body just changed since having Ted, like the shape of it and my metabolism just slowed down and I just felt really like different. So I carried on eating what I used to eat, which was junk food, like I'm not going to lie, I'm not a dieter, I'm not someone who can eat a salad and say, mmm, that's really nice, I'm someone who can demolish a doner kebab in a takeaway seven nights a week and be pretty happy about it, but I, can't, I couldn't do that anymore, I still can't do that, and it kind of showed, so now I weigh 10 stone and... Well, I was 10 stone and 4 pounds, but I've lost 3 pounds, like this last week or so, so... And that's just not what I want to be at all. I'd understand if that was like the weight I should be and I was eating healthy and that's just what my body wanted to stay like, but it's not. I'm eating junk and it needs to get sorted. So how I plan on doing it is, number one, is definitely, obviously, cutting out more junk food. Um, that's just a given. As much as I love it, I need to... Basically, what I've done is I've come up with a plan that I'm going to eat three meals a day. I don't have time to cook six meals a day, just with Ted, and I work part-time. So I've decided that I'm going to cook breakfast, lunch and dinner or tea, whatever you want to call it. We call it tea here up north and I'm going to make sure that they're as healthy as possible. So for example, I've been having like an omelette for breakfast and then lunch has usually been like a salad um, and then tea has usually been something out of the Joe Wicks Lean in 15 cookbook or it's usually something like sweet potato with a pasta sauce or because that's actually really good with a bit of bacon in there as well it's so good um, or chicken and veg you know just something like that so that is the how I'm planning to lose weight and number two is I'm trying not to be too hard on myself as well because what I tend to do when I diet is I eat really really well and then I crave food like junk food and I eat loads and loads and loads of it in one sitting because I've been denying myself of it and then the diet is over and back to square one back to hating my weight and I can't get back on the diet train so I need to like kind of let myself have the occasional treat I'm gonna let myself have one treat a day and um, this week it's kind of been like something like a chocolate bar or a packet of crisps or a hot chocolate with squirted cream and marshmallows because I can't give that up and yes yeah, so every day I've been giving myself a nice healthy I've given myself healthy meals healthy treats and then a nice unhealthy treat at the end of the day or whenever I choose basically just one a day and then one cheat day a week so mine was yesterday and I ate like a pig but I don't care I'd rather do it slow and steady slow and steady wins the race and that's the approach I'm going for Okay, so the second New Year's resolution of mine is to get organised. So <clears throat> I'm just sick of, um, for example, people knocking at the door. It's usually health visitors or the teacher of the deaf because Ted's obviously profoundly deaf. Um, or we're getting a call from the hospital saying that we've missed an appointment and it's because I'm not writing these things down in a diary um, so I'm, for oh, I'm not checking the diary either so I'm forgetting that people are meant to be coming completely forgetting about it, they're turning up at my door and I'm unprepared, I'm in my pyjamas, stinking of baby food and looking like a hot mess and I'm just not ready for it and it's overwhelming so that's an example of where my life just isn't organised. I want to get organising with my cleaning routine, my decluttering routine. I want to spend time less, I want to spend less time cleaning, should I say. So I need to kind of organise that. And yeah, I just want to in general be really, really organised and just feel like I'm on top of everything because I am a proper procrastinator. 
I will give myself something to do and then I just won't do it. I'll just put it off and then two weeks later it's still on my mind and it's giving me anxiety because I haven't done it and now it's a bigger task and it's just got bigger and bigger and yeah, I suffer from anxiety so it doesn't help. So I'm trying to utilise a diary as best I can. I'm just using this one that my mum got me from Christmas. It's just a Collins diary. It's just like your box standard diary with um, with like your month, it's like monthly and then it has like your days on. So what I did basically at the 1st of January is I wrote down all of my close friends and family's birthdays in this diary and then I also wrote a week before that birthday must buy present or must buy card slash present. So then I'm giving myself t enough time to go out and buy a present. I'm not doing it last minute. I'm not sending out belated birthday cards and presents or wishing happy birthday two days later. It's all in here. Um, I also added on the 1st of January all the known appointments that I had coming up. So Ted's GP appointments that I knew were coming up. Appointments at Manchester Hospital for Ted that I knew. They were all entered in here. And I take this now with me everywhere. That is what I need to do. So this usually lives in my bag. The only time this doesn't live in my handbag is every night I will bring this upstairs with me to bed and for five minutes, that all, that's all it is, every night before I go to sleep I give myself three tasks to do um, for the next day. I make myself think of three tasks that I need to do to get organised. So I'll give you an example. Okay, so here we have the 4th of January. So on Tuesday the 3rd at night time I wrote that for Wednesday the 4th I needed to ring spec savers to get my glasses sorted out. You can see I rang them, I've got them on my face and I was missing these for a year because my dog ate my last pair and now I'm back with sight so that task was accomplished and followed through. The next task for that day was to email Becky who is Ted's teacher of the deaf. I did that I ticked it off because it was done and then my last one was to walk to hospital to get Ted's hearing aid fixed and I did that as well. So usually I never used to do this and I'd used to keep it all up here in my head, it'd never get done and then two weeks later I'd have a massive list of things that I still haven't got done, I needed to do them all at once, I'd be overdue my tasks and I just think this is a really easy simple way to do it. So as well as using this diary system the other thing I wanted to get um, completely organised with this year was my house and decluttering and my cleaning schedule. I just wanted to kind of organise that and make it more, make my cleaning more productive instead of just doing bits here and there and feeling like all I do is clean and it never really getting anywhere. Was I started looking into minimalism and minimalism for those of you who don't know minimalism means a lot to different people but the general rule of thumb is is that you don't have loads of clutter in your house you only keep things that you really need and you don't own two of the same thing and etc etc there's loads of youtube videos on minimalism and then i also found marie kondo's i think that's what she's called the life changing magic of tidying up i haven't actually read it but i've seen enough youtube videos and i've read enough blogs on her book to know what the kind of the idea is and her basic um motto which i kept in my head the whole time when i was tidying up was does it spark joy so what she says if, is, is if you hold an item up and it doesn't spark joy, you bin it. And I know that things like scissors and hair grips and light bulbs aren't going to spark joy. So you've kind of just got to use it. You've got to use it sensibly, really. You can't really take it fully to heart, but you've got to be brutal. So on the 1st of January, I assigned myself a whole week to get done my entire house. First of all, I started off with my wardrobe and decluttered. The second day, I did my kitchen cabinets. The third day, I did Ted's wardrobes, um, etc, etc. And I feel so much better. So now that my house is completely decluttered, I'm finding it easier to clean anyway because I've got less things to tidy up, if that makes sense. Doing Ted's toys was the hardest thing, I will admit, but I kind of had to look at an object of Ted's and think like Ted of whether he likes it or not and whether he reaches for it and ever since I've done it I felt really awful doing it at the time but he hasn't noticed at all, he still plays with all the toys, he's not missing any of them and it's just taking less time at night to tidy up because it is, it's it's such hard work tidying up toys at night time. Um, 
So yeah, that's what I, I did initially. And then I wanted to come up with a cleaning plan. So as you can see, I've got this little label here and it's called chore checklist and I'm keeping it in this little wallet downstairs. And basically it has all of my chores on. So as you can see, that checklist kind of has things I need to do daily, things I need to do weekly. So I put a different sheet up at the start of every week. So on a Monday, the old one comes down and the new one goes up. And every single day I work through it. I work through the list and tick it off as and when I've done it. And as for the weekly chores, I just tick them off throughout the week. And I'm finding that it's really helping me know where I'm up to. And it's just getting through things a lot quicker and it just makes me feel really organised in my head. It might not work for you, but it works for me. And as for the monthly chart, I've also done a monthly chart that goes up once a month. And like the weekly one, it kind of just gets ticked off as and when throughout the month. So this is it. I realise it'll be backwards, but things on here to do monthly are wash the lounge throw, bleach the kitchen sink, clean and bleach the fridge, clean the microwave, clean inside the bin, reorganise the food cupboards, clean the skirting boards, organise the bits and bobs drawer, which everyone has, um, organise the bathroom cupboard and wipe walls, doors and light fittings. So I've actually done none of these this month, so the next couple of weeks are going to be pretty heavy, but these are things that need to get done and I know where I'm at. So my third goal for 2017 is actually to learn how to drive. Um, I am a shocking driver, let's just put it that way. I learned how to drive, or I was learning how to drive, when I was about 19 and then I just kind of steadily dwindled off it and it just didn't interest me so I gave it up and my instructor was a really nice guy but we just didn't click. Um, and then the second time that I attempted to learn how to drive I was actually really pregnant with Ted and I started when I was about two months into my pregnancy up until a week before I gave birth and I was freaking horrendous. I ju I'm just not a good driver, end of. But I need to learn how to drive. Um, I need to learn how to drive just because I find it hard to get to places when I can't drive. Um, luckily for me, our town centre is really close to my house, so it's a short walking distance. It's like a 25 minute walk and it gives me the exercise that I need, but I'm finding that I can't go to a lot of toddler groups that I want to go to just because it's an absolute trek getting there. And Ted doesn't want to be sat in a pram for an hour there and then an hour back. He, he don't want that. He would scream. He would have an absolute meltdown. So I need to learn how to drive. Um, and that's it really. God, this will, it'll probably never happen. So my last and final New Year's resolution is to make more time for me. It's really hard when you're a mum, you're a partner, you work and you have a house to run. It's really hard to find the time for yourself, quality time for yourself. Some nights I'm finding that after I've done all my chores and I've sat down, it's about half past eight and I can't be bothered doing anything else. And I'm going to bed within that hour and I've just got no time for myself. I'm finding that I'm just knackered and I want to go straight to bed after I've done my chores, after I've made the tea, after I've put Ted to bed. I'm just shattered. But I think I just need to start making more time for myself because I'll look in the mirror one day, it'll happen quite regularly, and I'll look in the mirror and I'll think, Jesus, what is going on with these eyebrows? What is going on with these chipped nails? What is going on with this greasy hair? Why does my skin look so spotty? Why am I so pale because I haven't faked hand? And I know it, it might, it's, do, it's different things for different people. But for me, looking good makes me feel good or making an effort with myself makes me feel good. And what I've tried to do every night um, is just make some time for myself. Whether that's a nice hot bubble bath, whether that's pluck my eyebrows like I say, or do my nails, or fake tan or even just read a book in bed before I go to sleep instead of just going straight to sleep or playing on my phone, doing something a bit more good for myself basically. So that is another thing that I really want to do this year. Okay, so that is all of my New Year's resolutions and goals. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If any of you 
I've got any New Year's resolutions and please list them down below because I'm love to have a nosy and have a little peek at what they are. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I shall see you soon. I hope you've all had a really good start to 2017. I'm trying to keep positive about the year and trying to get off with a really good start. So I hope it's treating you well and I shall see you soon. Bye!